spinning. Ooh. Live, live, live. It's, oh, we did it. We did it. We went live. Oh, you done did it now. Yeah. You sir. done did it now. Oh, you done done something now, man. You done started something, you know, started something that you got to finish now. That's right. If you're not Ooh. ready, better get ready. Better get, get your towel and your popcorn and your beverage of choice because it's about to go down. For reals. Hey, man. Hey, JBK, who do we got on the screen, man? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked that. Our magical, magnificent, marvelous, masterful, and the first and only second time guest on the Mad Men Masculinity, Miss Kianga Ford. Thank you, Miss Kianga. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> we got a we got a studio audience that we gotta, you yeah, know, yeah. we gotta we chime gotta, in. We gotta partake for them. So we are the Mad Men Masculinity. I myself and JCB Kendrick, and that gentleman over there. Yeah. The one that the the one that's uh, on another screen trying to, <laughs> trying, trying to play this off like I'm not hitting share. Um, but uh, let me see here, man. We you know how we do. We always fumble in the beginning, man. Oh yeah, we, we, we try to make it through, but give you, know, you guys some time to catch up. Yeah. Hey, if you if you're watching this while we're fumbling around trying to share this on our timelines, why don't you go ahead and hit share? Whoever you are, take a minute, hit share, hit like, hit something, man. Let us know you out there. Let us know you doing something, something. Uh, I'm trying to hit share so that we can keep going on here, waiting for it to pop up on my screen, which normally it takes, takes uh, a, minute. A, a hot butterball minute. Um, <laughs> but man, we are we are so excited, man. We're gonna let me see here, man. I don't know. There we go. I got that one. All right, so we got that share. So thank you once again, Miss Kianga, for 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 joining us because. Uh, I know this was one of those topics where I was like, you know, we need to get back on, Kirk, what are you going to talk about? And he said, hey, how about safety, him and hers, like safety from a guy and girl perspective? And I thought, yeah, we could probably do that. And he goes, and we probably should get a girl. <laughs> and I think I agree. So thank you for joining us and being yeah. our our female voice of wisdom and, and, and sanity as we go through and do our thing. You're super welcome. It's great to be back. Excellent. So how is it? Are you, are you still in Florida? I am still in Florida. It was a lovely Florida evening. Lovely Florida. Yeah. Is it still light or are you dark now? It's dark. It's definitely dark. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, thank you for joining us and staying up late with us. Well, no problem. I actually just slid in from Trader Joe's. We're about to do some soft opens here in Florida. And I want no parts of that craziness. <laughs> I was like, groceries. So, so, what's the deal? so what's the deal? Where are you now? Okay, so let's play it off. So I just got finished sharing so you can. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, what's the deal in Florida? What, what are y'all doing down there with social distancing and self and self, whatever, isolations and all that kind of stuff? What was the deal down there? We've been sheltering at home like champs. Um, I'm in the central part of the state and a lot of the impact has been more in sort of the south in Miami area. It's just a lot more, yeah. well, it's just a different kind of diversity. We have Disney here in the area where I am, but it closed mm -hmm. quite quickly mm -hmm. in response. So we don't have our usual flux of international traffic because the parks are closed. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big impact here, but our beach is open, I think tomorrow, and we'll start mm -hmm. to see some soft nice. openings on Monday. Mm -hmm. when, when, you go to, when you go to the beach, what beach do you go to? New Smyrna is actually my favorite beach. I'm really close to Daytona and a little mm -hmm. town named because it's between Daytona and another town. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually in Deltona between uh -huh. Daytona and Delant. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Which you'd never find if you were not from here. You didn't know yeah. someone. I, I used to live in Florida. I know what the deal is down there. I love yeah. Cocoa Beach. Cocoa Beach is my favorite. Yeah, uh, it's that's, a little that's, further that's, south. I mean, but I have to say, like, on, when on the East Coast. Is, when the beaches were technically closed, it was fine because it just meant that people weren't traveling from elsewhere to come to the beach. The beaches right. were still available, just not for sunbathing. Yeah. But now they're officially open. Yeah. People will come from well, far away. My, my favorite, favorite beach is, uh, is uh, Siesta Key, of course. I mean, that's over on the Gulf side, but uh, that's, that's, that's my jam right there. Yeah. yeah they will, they will right come. Speaking of, there, right? hey, Speaking so of open, they will come. come. So when I when I kick this off to you now, we just we just yoked you in here just within a matter of a couple hours. And when I reached out to you with the topic, <laughs> do you remember what your response was? What did you say? 
<laughs> she don't remember. She's like, oh, no, no. no idea. Her response oh, no, was like, she's like, oh, this is catnip. She was like, basically, oh, okay. she's like, oh, yeah, I'm stuck at home. You know, that's perfect time here. We're going to get this on. So, um, yeah, so, you know, Inside Scoop, we kind of had the idea to talk about the idea, the notion of safety, comparison or comparing um, what men see as safety and what women see as safety. And this is something that kind of came up in a kind of completely different context with me and somebody else, uh, a female. And, and, um, and, you know, I was speaking from a man's perspective. She's speaking from a woman's perspective. And I was like, hey, there we go. I know some, you know, a place where we can flesh that out. And uh, so anyhow, but the, yeah, the whole idea of safety. And, and I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess, uh, well, let's just start off with the, the, the softball question to you, Miss Kianka. And kind of as we were beginning to kick back and forth, me and JBK were like, should we get a female voice involved in this? I mean, we can kind of speak to our experience, but... You know, to keep some level of legitimacy, should we get a credible somebody that we trust, female voice? And that's where that's where you came up. So, um, so is, is safety for women? Is that okay, I mean, awesome. and you're frozen for me. So if you ask me, oh, I'm okay. just gonna smile yeah. about it because I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll see it. We'll see if it comes through by by the time you hear me. But um, but Jason, I can hear you. If okay. you can uh -oh. hear there you go. Well, so what what uh, Kirk was saying is is from a woman's point of view what is safety and i know my thought process was i was going to go by kind of the three basic needs of men and women and, and how that relates to safety but not being a woman i can only rebuttal something i've read or something like that so mm -hmm. he wanted to ask you like That's from your point of view you as a woman alternately freezing on me <laughs> it's that it's florida like wi-fi <laughs> but can you hear me Yes. But okay. it's no longer so, so what is what is safety for a woman? Well, you know, I don't know yet what context we're in for this question, but I whatever, really whatever context you want. Right. I really love it. And I, you know, I come through a lineage of people and especially women doing this work. So one of the one of my mentors and somebody that I've learned a lot from is Alison Armstrong. And I think that she demonstrates safety so well, right? So she she does this thing where she tells the man to like grip his own hand. Try it with me if you're if you're following okay. along. Right. So take your hand and without like crushing any bones, right? Like without causing yourself any injury or damage, squeeze it as hard as you can like just as hard as you can, you know, mm -hmm. right? And then when you've done that without hurting yourselves, if mm -hmm. there's a woman in your space, ask her to squeeze your hand as hard as she possibly can. Oh, wow. And it'll feel like a fraction of the impact. You'll be like, what, that's it? Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. And there's this just really clear demonstration that what comes from the difference in our physiology and what comes from the different levels of testosterone that we're carrying is a level of brute physical strength. That means I have a relationship to uh, safety and risk in space that you don't experience every day. Mm. Right. Mm. I move around in the world with a fraction of your capacity to physically respond to danger and threat. Mm. So it is safety, I mean, can we just, I mean, it, can we establish if it is the case, is the idea of safety, whether it's emotional, physical, whatever, so is that- for us a little bit, but oh. I love that, I, I love that um, really clear sort of physical experience, mm -hmm. right? You know, one of the, the other ones that she does is um, just having men check. Right, like how long has it been since your physical safety felt threatened? Right. Right. Has it been in the last week? Has it been yeah. in the last month? Like if you think about it, has it been in the last year? Was it 10 years ago? Was it in your early adulthood? Was it in your boyhood? Right. Like when is the last time you felt at physical threat, yeah. like physical right. risk? What is it for you guys? It's been a while. Yeah, it's it's been a long time. But for women, it's it's. I mean, normally days, within a matter right. of days. Yeah. 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 So was it ten years or more for either of you? Probably. No, I mean, I put myself in danger doing things like driving silly or snowboarding and stuff. So I've I've felt physically in danger. But as somebody else threatening me, no, it's been quite a long time. I mean, last time I was probably 
in a in a martial arts gym and it was part of the training so it wasn't like i was out on the street and somebody threatened me right yeah. right it's been what time is it about an hour and a half wow since wow. the last time i was in a place where i felt a kind of physical alert wow right jeez so how important how important is the idea of safety to women hugely important and it's not it doesn't exist so much at the level of idea right mm -hmm. like one of the things that we right. tend not to understand is how much our reactions are safety minded mm -hmm. even if that's not the conscious thought that we're having mm -hmm. right. wow yeah. um and, and so we should we should probably pause for the cause here. And if you're watching this, feel free to chime in. You know, we can see comments on the side of our screen here. You know, let us know what you think. Um, yeah. Of course, hit like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. But uh, but let us know what you think as well. The idea of safety. So so I, it, it sounds like me that um, so it sounds like me right now. We're kind of honing in on the physical safety. What about emotional safety? Mm -hmm. They're super related. Mm -hmm. Right, like they're they're not demonstrable in the same way, mm -hmm. but you know, one of the things that you're always trying to do with a woman, if you are in like romantic relationship or intimate relationship of any kind, is kind of or any woman, honestly, that you're trying to handle, um, is help her relax her center of vigilance. Right, that thing that has her paying attention to multiple things and in this kind of like heightened state of alert attention. That can be anything from like dust to um, a fire truck, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Like attention for the feminine is just called in many directions simultaneously. And so something that is emotionally askew has it so I can't like rest, settle, receive in the same way as a physical threat does. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, and one of the reasons I was glad you accepted is because I know in my study and awareness that as men and women, we have different kind of core needs. And mm -hmm. for like the men, it's respect, uh, a sense of control and a sense of, of purpose. And then for what I learned from the ladies, it's a sense of safety, which can be physical safety, a sense of security, which could be like that emotional safety or that awareness of like, where okay. is this going? And then the, the presence, like being present with women. How, how does that relate to your experiences of safety and not feeling safe and whatnot? Mm -hmm. I get it. I'm, ca I'm catching up to your threes. <laughs> so it was uh, safety, security, and, and presence. Uh, presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like yes. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. only one of you guys freezes for me at a time. So yeah. <laughs> I'm like, and back to yeah. yeah. You're correct. That's what he was getting at. Yeah, yeah. that's what he said. Awesome. Yeah. The the. The safety part in that feels very um, deeply connected to presence and security, right? And you know, I think a lot of times when we think about security, we are thinking about like the, one of the first things that pops to mind is like financial security, right. right? Like kind of circumstantial security, but often it's it's also like the security of how much space am I free to take up here. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like mm -hmm. kind of understanding what the parameters are. So I talk a lot in my work about the container and sort of showing women how much space they can take up, like how much space they have in any given environment is part of what creates the security. So mm -hmm. even if it's something pretty narrow, right, like, OK, we're going to have this experience for the next two hours. I understand the limits of it. And there's something very secure feeling about that when I can touch the edges and I know that you're holding them, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where things like clear agreements become really important mm -hmm. and how it is that like, when you're not clean in your agreements and the way that you align with those, um, what happens is women have a shifting sense an unstable sense of security and a weakened sense of safety. Mm. Right. And um, I'm throwing out some shorthand, right? Yeah. Like I'm just throwing out women. <laughs> no, no. But, but most to of me, the time I'm talking about the feminine, right? Yeah, like to me, feminine. it sounds like that the yeah. core of all that is communication, though. To me, it sounds like the core of all that is us being able to communicate clearly such that, you know, we can establish whatever the boundaries are, whatever the borders are, and all that stuff. Yes. And <laughs> yes, and the masculine overestimate what 
overestimates what words do for the feminine. Words don't do much for the feminine. Really? So when we get in a conversation about communication, a lot of times men start saying things to us and we're like, that doesn't matter that much, mm. right? Like, wait a minute, man, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 I can't, I can't, I gotta push back on that one because <laughs> the typical stereotype is the guy shutting down and the woman saying, talk to me, talk to me. I want to hear, communicate to me. And now you're saying that's the complete opposite. It's different, right? It's it's just a like, that's like a, a level of communication about, um, oh yeah, there are many, many layers going here. Right? So, like, so are you saying it's more the feeling, so it's not as much the words, but the feeling behind it, like if she feels secure in your presence and in the plan or the path. I know in my experience before, not having clear boundaries or clear communication, I would ha end up having those conversations of where is this going? What is this for? And that was basically her attempting to establish some sense of security and, and feeling safe within, within the relationship. It's just looking for the container that you weren't defining. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Ooh, so then, so so guys can be the container. So the masculine can be the uh -oh. container. I lost that, that Kirk. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry, I wish I could help with the interneting. Yeah, no, he was just saying that the the masculine is like the container for the mm, feminine. Like nice. we talk about, where it's like the masculine's like the the riverbanks for the feminine flow for the river to flow within. And so we have to have a clearly defined boundary or container for for the feminine to feel safe and secure within. Yeah. So I missed part of that, but I'm gonna say yes because the end that I did here sounded like it was headed in the right direction. He was he was right. He was right. <laughs> he was right on. He was he was dead was spot like, on. I can vouch he, for this. He was he was dead spot on with that one. So I think I think when we when we're like the container, the way I said, like a flower pot, then we can be the space in which she can be planted and grow roots. So that her plant, her flower can grow up and her her, her flower can bloom essentially. But but we can be like the container of, of that uh, of the flower that that holds the dirt and the roots and all that kind of stuff. But um, which can be opposite. So 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 let's shift gears since we're already yeah. seventeen minutes into this whole thing. Um, so from a guy perspective, though, it's almost like I, I almost kind of sense an an almost an opposite. Uh, JBK, I mean, I don't know if you agree, but it almost feels like from from a guy, safety is almost like space. It's almost like freedom. In, in, in a way, it's almost, but it, 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 I feel like it relates to that same sort of container thing. Like we know our boundaries, we know our thing, we we know what's ours. Like, you know, the, the three needs are respect, a need of respect, a need of a sense of control, and then a purpose. And if we feel like we can control our space or our environment, or we have some sort of say, and that, and I know in my experience, one of the things that took me a while to figure out was that the way we as men and women show support and respect are different. Like the way ladies a lot of times show respect mm -hmm. to men comes across as um, undercutting or judging or or being kind of negative and, and and nitpicky, which that's how. And it took me a while. I had to like learn this from some of my ladies' friends. That's how they support each other. They offer advice. They offer criticism. They offer like things. And for a guy, it's like, oh, I, you don't think I'm good enough? Oh no. And so then we feel mm -hmm. disrespected because that's not it. Our sense of safety is like feeling like we have control and and have the respect of our partner to do what we feel like is necessary. And I think yeah. that comes from creating that same container. So she feels safe and secure to allow us to take control mm -hmm. and, and move forward. How, how does that sound to you, Kiana? I, I think we lost her again. I think, I think, I think she might be paused up there, but I, you know, I almost think for me, man, a woman feels safe when I know she ain't going to be cray cray. Right. Well, <laughs> like, like when I know that you know, so and we can be cool. okay. But now I tend to be losing the one of you that's speaking. <laughs> oh. Um, but I, I think from, a, from I don't know whichever one of us you can hear, but from a man perspective, I, I, it almost seems like you know, um, as as opposed to a container, maybe it's a leash. Like mm -hmm. JB, you know, Jason, you talk about that whole leash yeah. part of it, yeah. but maybe from a safety perspective, it's. It's it's the leash of how far I can go mm. and still be connected, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's it's a it's a mutual sort of safety thing because if we okay. as men create the the boundaries and the container, and then she lets us know the length of our leash, so we know how far we can run and to get our freedom, and she feels safe within her container. So it's a it's a I guess like in most things in a relationship, it's not just a one sided deal. 
it's <laughs> we're both got to provide our side for each of us to feel safe and secure within right. that relationship. So you guys will tell me if you can't hear me. No, we can hear you. Um, but I, I love that metaphor. <laughs> I'm watching the like the the pot run away with the leash <laughs> <laughs> right now. But you know, I think that one of the things that we talk a lot of, about with uh, the women that I work with is about uh, castration and emasculation, right? Like one of the things that really helps to create a sense of safety for the masculine in relationship is when he knows he's not going to get cut. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. totally so agree. we really have to learn what it is that feels cutting and to really begin to understand what are the needs underneath the cut, mm -hmm. right? Like what are the threats to our own safety mm -hmm. that we experience? What are the things that we're wanting or desiring and being able to actually begin to put those in language, right? So it's not that language is never part of the communication. It's just that we often insert language in the wrong places without mm -hmm. understanding kind of like where the hits are. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, right, like you're throwing barbs at me, like yeah. not necessarily verbally and trying to clean yeah. it up only at the level of talking. Yeah. Right. See, I want to find out how she's going to be when when things are not good. Like I want to find out how she's going to be when her feelings are hurt or mm -hmm. when, you know, when I do mess up because I'm, I'm going to be imperfect. I'm going to stumble i'm gonna do something stupid it may come from a good heart but i'm gonna do something so i want to find out how she when she, you know, does, she does she fight dirty you know <laughs> like, like does she come after me do, like you said right. cut to the stabs or you know i mean to me so, that's that's what i want to find out the last thing i heard was you want to know what she's going to be like when you do mess up because you're mm -hmm. going to be imperfect mm -hmm. and i think you said some beautiful clarifying words after that that i didn't mm -hmm. actually hear mm -hmm. um, you did. it was beautiful <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a just take your word for it. Um, yeah, I think those are those are really important places to get to, right? And a lot of times in relationships, there's this um, kind of faux sense of safety, which is like the the walking on eggshells part, mm -hmm. and then you don't actually get to see each other for a while. Mm -hmm. So it's it's sort of like. Um, how do you like live in the real spaces? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I'm often with the men that I work with saying, you've got to show up in the space that you want to occupy. So a lot mm -hmm. of times they sort of show up in a more like restrained or contained way and then think, oh, they'll get more fuller expression over time. But it's a similar kind of bait and switch right. as the woman who appears really sweet and then something happens and like, it sort of like unleashes like the rage monster, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's like you mm -hmm. want to be able to see the fullness of who you're interacting with and you get to see that by bringing the fullness of who you are. And mm -hmm. if you're both doing that in an authentic way, you get to the rubs more quickly mm -hmm. than when you're being polite on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I guess that comes back to the having the safety and you know feeling safe to communicate on both sides and then having those conversations like this is what triggers me these are my sore spots and vice versa and then showing up fully like you said so that you can create that safety container so you can express fully because i know in my experience the walking on the eggshells was much more common than the actual full expression mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah i mean you know be the, the like the whole idea of walking on eggs i mean i hate that idea of walking on eggshells and i gotta be somebody that i'm not just to be, you know, just to be accepted or just to be whatever. And so, right. you know, to me, maybe it's hand in hand between safety and acceptance. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not asking you to put up with anything that I do, but accept my, you know, humanity yeah. um, as part of me being human. And so maybe the safety and the acceptance kind of go hand in hand for for guys. I don't know if it's the same for, for women or not, but, um, but just the idea of, can I show you me and, you know, yeah. And you still love me. Will you guard my heart, even you know, even uh, even when I'm not perfect? Yeah. How much you get that? <laughs> Except my humanity, several yeah. other things, yeah. even yeah. when I'm not perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's it. Except my humanity yeah. when I'm not perfect. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it in I, in terms of a guy. Yeah, I guess it's basically. How can we know that we can feel safe, that you're not going to cut too deep when you're upset and, and you can feel safe that we're not going to be physically abusive when we're upset or, you know, some something along those lines where we can feel safe to express ourselves 
without and and understand that our partner is going to accept and not take that opportunity to stab and cut or be violent or, or, you know, threaten our safety, whether that's physical or emotional or anything. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting that with a lot of shelter in place, I've been in a whole lot of conversations about boundaries mm -hmm. <laughs> recently. Mm -hmm. because it's really important right now that yeah. we get them and that we get them clean, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't have the same kind of avoidance escapes that we normally have available to us. Some people are sheltering in place with the people with whom they have friction, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. deep patterns of friction. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's really essential about boundaries is that they be explicit, not implicit, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't mean that you start a relationship with your list of places you cannot tread. Mm -hmm. It means that as soon as you feel a boundary that's encroached upon, it's your responsibility, not your partners to have guessed it or to caretake around it, but mm -hmm. your responsibility to articulate the boundary when it feels like there's something close to it or it's being crossed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then to actually manage upholding those boundaries no matter what. So when you let your boundaries get crossed really early on in relationship, then you've set yourself up to feel that like resentment of encroachment, yeah. right? So part of like how you see your partner early on is you set your limits and you see how people deal with that, mm. right? So somebody that's not gonna respect your boundaries isn't either gonna take responsibility for their own boundaries, mm. right? So mm -hmm. you're going to feel encroached on by her, but she's also going to feel encroached on by you. Mm -hmm. so, so you'll. Just so what you're saying see, is, as yeah. a guy who has been triggered, I actually have to not shut down and say I've been triggered, and I need a moment so I can tell you which boundary is about to be crossed and set these boundaries. So I have to be verbal about my triggering. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and even more than verbal, you have to be self-aware right. of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, somehow it gets encoded in that moment, is she just evil? I don't know <laughs> what she's going to do. Sometimes she <laughs> <Right>? is. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you practice the boundaries, you can see, like, where there are people who are kind of innocently tromping on your daisies right. mm -hmm. and where there are people that actually have malintent or just mm -hmm. really unclear boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if a lot of times uh, when when we as guys, when we see the woman in our life kind of melting down or beginning to close up, her flower beginning to close, I wonder if a great place to start is is to find out whether or not she feels safe in that moment with whatever the circumstances are. Right. Yeah, uh, I mean, that, that would make sense to me. I would feel like even in my experience of, OK, I'm triggered, so let me shut down and then I'll go do my work, but not communicate. It. I'll mm -hmm. go figure out why I'm triggered and try to work on it, but not tell my partner why. And then I they walk on eggshells or I walk on eggshells, but um, repeat what you were saying to Kiana, because maybe she can hear you now. Uh, I was saying it sounds like, uh, I don't know, can you hear me, Kiana? Yes. yes? No? Okay, <laughs> so it's, I'll say it really quick before it cuts out. It sounds like if, if the woman in our lives is beginning to shut down, if her flower begins to close, a great place to start might be that she feels safe in whatever the circumstances are right now, or the situation. Yeah, so the answer to that is anytime you see the flower start to close, she doesn't feel safe. Right. <laughs> right. And it might not be a verbal place that you begin with this. So if you have a good relationship um, with her in terms of physical trust and an expression of safety, sometimes it's just allowing the energy to begin to run and manifest. If she seems to still be in a verbal state, you can invite her to just kind of run that energy verbally and give her the space not to sort of try to solve it or try to intercede. But a lot of times when you see that shutdown start to happen, it's the thing, Jason, that you were pointing to, it's the need for increased presence and attention. Mm. And so that like mm. retreat to give her space often inflames the sense of unsafety. Mm. So if you mm. can step into that moment instead, and usually if you can step in, in a physical way, right? Mm. Like. It's a hug, it's a tight hug, it's compression, mm -hmm. it's a joke. It's like really a kind of like rattle it, shake it up a right. bit, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to have some underlying trust to make that possible, mm -hmm. but it's not the time to come in with, so just tell me what's wrong. <laughs> Cause you might not know, right. right? Like the experience of like the bloom contraction is not a cerebral experience. Mm -hmm. Well, in my experience too, when I've been triggered, I have to go through my process to figure out why I was triggered, like what's the underlying 
thought process or thing that was triggered. And sometimes it takes space or me time to, to look at that so I can understand that. But to have the awareness not to retreat when she's triggered or we're both triggered, but to to step into the foray or to the storm and, 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 and be there together within that the eye of the storm versus running away, like go to your neutral corners, like, no, oh, come together, and no. connect. And that's one of the places that actually the masculine and the feminine work differently, right? So like the masculine in injury often needs retreat mm -hmm. and that's fine. The safety that you establish there is around saying that I will be back and giving, if you can give a time frame for when you'll be back, that also increases the trust. The, the sort of feminine in that state um, needs more presencing. And so what often happens is we're trying to handle each other the way we want to be handled. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't translate that way yeah. or come up with like universal principles of like, okay, if we're, if we're in heat, right? Like if we're in conflict then we both have to lean more into it and doesn't usually practically play out that way. Mm -hmm. And it depends on whether your partner is um, fighting from her masculine or her feminine. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Wow. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Do it. Um, and I almost think, though, that I wonder if, to some degree, we both need to participate in our own rescue. Yeah. <clears throat> Meaning, you know, if she's feeling unsafe, mm -hmm. maybe part of the getting back to a safe place is not just his responsibility. It's Maybe. never just his responsibility. Right. It's never ever just his responsibility. So I guess I wasn't playing the devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're, I think the place where we get confused isn't in the place of, of like, do we have agency, but is more in the place of where is the reset? And mm -hmm. the reset isn't just retreat. The reset isn't just an engagement. It depends on where both players are along that masculine feminine continuum, right? right? Mm -hmm. So if you really have someone in their feminine and they're on shutdown, they will probably be saying, just leave me alone. And it will probably be the last thing in the world they need. Right. And you have a masculine in that same space saying, just leave me alone for a minute. And it is exactly what he means, yeah. right? Uh, see, I There's mean, y'all make it too like, difficult, uh, man. Y'all make it too complicated. Volatility that's a building that needs a different expression. <laughs> it's like our climaxes look different. Our conflicts mm -hmm. look different. Well, I mean, we're, we're complicated beings, Kirk. So like, yeah. there, there's, I mean, no, there's no right answer one way or the other. It's like, can't you, can you say, just can't you just say what you mean? <laughs> well, I mean, you could say like, okay, if the if the woman in her feminine is triggered, then the man needs to step in and give her a hug and make her feel safe. And then if he's triggered, take a step back. But then if she's in the feminine body in her masculine, then maybe you both need to go to your separate corners. I mean, right. yeah, play, it, play it by the situation. And it, it is actually complex at that level, right? But to, to understand, I think the first part that we really can get is not to project that what you need and trigger, what you need in conflict right. is what your partner needs and on you both sides. Practice that question, what do you need right. right now? So the feminine, one of the highest values of the feminine is connection. Mm -hmm. So when you're saying, I need to retreat, she's like, I'm losing connection, right? Which is the, the last mm -hmm. thing that she would want in that circumstance, right? But to understand that like mm -hmm. your need for a retreat is not disconnection right. and you're working from a different mm -hmm. set of values. I mean, I don't know, I love yeah. to play in this pool yeah. in, a, in a complex well, way. And that's a great point <laughs> that you brought up too, because for the ladies to, re to remember when your guy needs space, like part of that leash analogy is for us, part of our needs is that sense of freedom and sense of control. And part of the way we get that sense of control is to run to the end of our leash. So if your need for connection keeps you yanking him back before he gets to the end of the leash, he's never going to get that sense of freedom. So you've got to allow him to get all the way to the end of the leash, all the way to the end and feel his sense of freedom for his moment. And then he'll naturally run back to you. But if you keep yanking because you need the connection, then you're going to stunt his his sense of freedom. And then there's going to be resentment coming in that as well. Totally true. <laughs> right. But like if you turned around and you treated your partner like she needs that same expression, like she needs to also get to the end of her leash and have the time, yeah. right, to come back, she'll feel not connected with. Right. Right. And the like the kind of overwhelm that often creates conflict won't get um touched enough, shaken up to get mm. moved through. So you'll get um more of like a calcification of the resentment. Mm. Right. 
I still don't know how to, I still don't know the balance between if she says she wants to get away, but she really doesn't. And we should somehow know that she really doesn't want to get away. But if I lean in to connect and then she pushes me away, now I feel rejection, but she's really not trying to reject me. She's really trying to, you know, man, that's, whew, I need a yeah. drink. That's <laughs> that's that's moment. Real complicated. So what I say to the ladies is figure yourselves out. Learn to draw a map, learn to take 100% personal responsibility. We're asking the masculine to come and support, but not to have to decode and support and resist when you um, aren't willing to sort of take in the thing that you're needing or asking for. I would, mm. I would reiterate that for the guys too. Like if, if you haven't done your work, guys, you don't know what triggers you, you don't know what you need. Because I know there's times where I'm like, I'm not even sure what I need right now. Best thing you say is I don't know oh, what I need right now. Like that was about to be really good. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the thing is if we don't know each yeah. ourselves, how can we communicate to our partners? Yeah, and you know, and then to a degree, you know, we also do have to recognize that sometimes we are pushing away that thing that we do want, that thing that we do need. Um, I mean, sometimes it is a matter of self sabotage. Sometimes we are running away from the very thing that we really, really want. Yeah. Um, and then when we end up without it, we can't blame anybody else but ourselves to a degree because it was there, but we didn't take the opportunity to have it when it was there. Yeah. yeah and then well, with the, and for sure with a guy, like if a guy reaches out so many times and he's rejecting, he's cut off, he's, he's going to stop. Yeah. Like, you know, you can only say no so many times but to a guy before he stops asking or before yeah. he stops pursuing. And so, you know, there is a finite line. And, and the same thing with a, with, with a woman, like there'll be a point where she'll stop giving. I mean, when her cup is dry and she just doesn't have anything left and then it's done, it's a done deal, party's over, turn out the lights, this is a done deal. Yeah, and one thing, guys, to, to pay attention to as well, because this is one thing that used to get me in the most trouble, don't always take your woman's words literally. If she's triggered and she tells you to go to hell, that. don't take that personally or take it literally. She's emotional and she's reacting from her emotions. We as logical linear guys are going to think well she told me to go to hell so she's done with me yeah. you know she, she was done with you in that moment she's going to recover and go well where did he go and i've had that experience where i took her words literally and went away and then she's like well wh where'd you go why are you not coming home you told me to go away i'm so confused now because i think yeah. you know that emotional outburst as a literal statement yeah i don't know man my patience is I, I think as i get older my patience is running thin in terms of you know, in terms of that, like, look, if you tell me to go away and you keep telling me to go away, I'm going away. Like, right. you know, I, and I'm all yeah. about, you know, I, I'm just, I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it, you know, at a certain point, man, I think, you know, I'm just like, look, you know, here's the deal. We grown ass people, right? I mean, we, right. you know, at some point I get the dynamic, I get the exchange, the ebb and the flow and all that kind of stuff. But at some point, you know, we have to, um, you know, at some point we have to figure out what that dynamic is. And at some point, you know, again, I think you have to expect the person at some point to do the thing that you're asking them to do. <clears throat> um, but I, maybe as I get older, I'm, I think my patience is just wearing thin. Well, yeah, um, you're, you're more particular. Is. You know what you want now. So you're not putting up with all the BS and, you know, <laughs> you got like a three strikes you're out kind of mentality, which I get. Yeah. I'm tired too. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and as soon as I feel unsafe in terms of, and for me personally, a lot of my safe or unsafe has to do with what will she do with my name? Yeah. In, in other words, you know, how how close can I let you in and trust you with my uh, my my name, my reputation, my whatever it is, my my business, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm, if I'm going to let you be my rib, then you are protecting my heart and my lungs, uh -huh. right? And and I'm just going to let you do that whole thing if I can, but you know, as soon as I find out that you don't have the integrity to do that, even when it's, you know, tough to do that, you know, that, that's kind of where, that's kind of where I, I, I lose it. Yeah. So I'd love to jump in there and just say a little bit about integrity, right? Mm -hmm. so it's coming up for me when we were in, in sort of like the last portion of my conversation. Mm -hmm. because one of the things to get is that we actually don't have the same idea of what integrity is. Mm -hmm right on the masculine side and on the feminine side. So the, for the masculine integrity is the alignment of word and action. Yep. For the feminine integrity is the alignment of feeling and action. 
So if she felt inflamed and like it was time to push you away, as long as she acted in alignment with the emotion that she had, with the feeling that she had in that moment, that is integrity. <laughs> it, it isn't in the constancy of the word. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Well, that's and hard for men to grasp. That's so hard. That's so we, hard. We, we are so bound by a word. So our, our word is our bond. This is like mm-hmm. my handshake is my word, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's really hard for men to like take that in and go, "Oh, she only meant it then. Now that she said it, she feels better. So now she doesn't yeah. mean it anymore." All right, and it's also like she was she was right because it felt right. You know, it's like, you know, if, if, according to basically your logic of what you just said, she was correct as long as it, as long as what she does matches how she feels in the moment. You know, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how it works. <laughs> to me, that sounds so frustrating, like the, the whole idea of all that. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of there right now. And that's totally fine. Yeah. As long as you can respect that it's always going to be different. Right. Like it's not ever actually going to get easier unless you want a partner who is uh, further into their masculine selves. And you can get that, but then you won't get that sweet hotness that most men also no, want. Their passion. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and that's the other part too, is that we, we are drawn to the fire. We're like moths and we're, we're drawn to that flame, man. It's like, man, the, sometimes the more cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, the more it's like, <laughs> ah, I yes. want it. <laughs> You know, that's the that's the frustrating part. It's like, man, if everything was just like regular, I'm like, yeah, but was she a little cray cray? It's like, oh, there's something about her, man. Yeah. I got to anyhow, whatever. That's yeah. that's our own little issue. <laughs> so as we begin to line up on the runway here and, and bring this plane in for a landing, um, what would you all what would you two say um, are the core either masculine versus feminine, whichever one you want to tackle, the core of the, the feeling, the idea, the notion of being safe and safety. What, what would either one of you say that is either way for masculine or, or feminine? Miss hmm. Kianga, ladies first. I would say that like safety for me is being able to express the full range of who I am and not feel judged. Mm-hmm. Right. So like if the container that I'm in, the relational container can handle me in all of my forms, then I settle. Right. So there's a there's a way like settle in, engage, open. Right. Like then there's way more space available. Um, and some of the emotional range is about testing the container. So then getting more solid in the container is really helpful. Mm. Yeah, I would almost reiterate that. I mean, it, it may look different, but at the core, it's going to be the same thing for you know, ladies. If you can accept your man in every like if you can set, accept him at his weakest, at his little boy moment, at his crush moment, he will be the strongest man for you. He will feel the safest. And it's that same thing, being able to accept him in all of his derivations of emotion and beingness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and as a guy, I, I would love to be on your pedestal, but I'd like to be on a human pedestal, not a above human pedestal so that when I do stumble, when I do fail, when I do mess up or whatever it is, that we're able to, I'm able to still be a person, I'm able to still be human, I'm able to still be loved and, and to be appreciated for for um, for everything that I am. And, and, you know, and again, to me, in my world, that has to do with, um, can I trust you in the area of how you are when things are not going great? So, um, Hey, Kianga, what, 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 I mean, what if someone wants to get a hold of you? First of all, let's take a step back. And what is your area of, 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 of I want to say expertise, but expertise you're, you're, offering, you're offering to the universe. And then how can people get a hold of you if they need that? So awesome. I work with uh, men and women to understand the dynamics of contemporary masculine feminine relating i run a project called love and freedom education it has its own page on facebook but you can also find me i've gotten wise to you guys so this time my last name is in (laughs) a little caption below so just send me a message send me a friend request i'd be happy to talk to you about understanding these things at greater depth so and I'm assuming, and, and people can contact you on social media. And what, did, what, what what's your Monday Mancers? What's that all about? Oh yeah, on Monday. See, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm on it. See? see, we are fans. I get on and I answer any questions that you have about the masculine or masculine feminine relating. I take questions from absolutely anyone, anywhere, and any sort of subtopic there. 
And I just spend a little time trying to give some perspective on how these things are interacting. Mm. When are you coming to Colorado again? And those I post both in my personal page and in Love and Freedom yeah. Education. When are you coming to Colorado again? Gosh, I was supposed to be there right very now. <laughs> <laughs> but da -da -da -da, shelter yeah. in place. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. And, and and JBK, you're a pretty smart guy, man. I mean, you're you're a gifted guy. I mean, you're the connection catalyst, man. I mean, what if somebody needs to catalyze their connection and they need you to help them do with that? How do they get a hold of you, man? I'm, I'm very easy. I put it right there and underneath underneath my big old head, jasonbkendrick.com. Email me. You can find my other videos, my other offerings. I'm offering uh, right now, especially to get us out of this COVID madness. I'm offering half price on my in-person Reiki and reading sessions. If you're in, in a relationship or single, I'm offering half price on my coaching. So great time to, and for you couples, can I get touch on this? For you couples that are in place together and maybe struggling, I'm doing a two for one. So you can both get half price and both come to me. And I, I act mm -hmm. as a very good intermediary and, and mediator to help you learn to connect and, and help you through those struggles and arguments you may be having. But, mm -hmm. you know, there are times where I might be busy with somebody else. So, Mr. Kirk and Samuels, if these folks need to get a hold of you and your brilliance and your masterful mm -hmm. insight, how can they get a hold of you? Well, man, with strength, wisdom, gentleness, and mercy, I co-create a world of intimacy and unconditional connection by teaching and inspiring one million men how to be William Wallace in relationships, how to be free from anything that will hold you back from connection. And for a lot of guys, a huge majority of guys, definitely more than 50 out of 100 guys, that is that is the addiction to just the online habit of consuming people consuming humanity and that 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 takes us away from uh from 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 intimacy and connection and man there is kirk m samuels right there boom kirk m samuels .com. how do you get a hold of me man so uh so man you know this is this is totally fantastic uh Keong, we we love you to death we got to get you out here to colorado uh -huh. um and uh and uh, Jason will give you his car. You can drive it around. Absolutely, you take do whatever it you want. Uh, it's better all the time. <laughs> whenever, whenever you, whenever you come out, no, no problem. Jason got you. He got you taken care of. So, uh, anyhow, um, man, any last words or what? Or are we, we good to go? I'm just. I, this is one of those topics. I wish we had another hour and a half because we we're just scratching the surface. We could go so much deeper. But thank you so much, Kanga, for being available and making yourself available mm -hmm. and sharing your wisdom. I mean. You are our, our repeat guest, and we we're going to have you back on here again sure as soon as we done. can. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure not. There's so much to talk about. Indeed, indeed. Any last words, Kianga? Yeah. Something you want to share with the folks right before we get off? Oh, I just can't say enough about 100% personal responsibility, right? We kind of get fooled into this idea that if we both take half responsibility in the relationship, then the whole is covered, but it's not actually how it works. So if you take 100% responsibility for what's happening and your partner takes 100% responsibility for what happens, what's possible is exponential. Mm. All right. Mm. Boom. Boom. Mic drop. Done. Mic drop. Done. Drop something because we're done. All right, that people. We love you. Better than that. We'll see you next time and keep your heads up and keep your hands clean. We love you. Good bye night, bye. guys. Thanks for having yeah. me. Absolutely.